my name's Jesse, and I'm the latest member of the Full Drive 24-7 crew. Did you just say winch? <laughs> All I wanted to do was go full driving. Obviously, I was a bit too young and I couldn't. Dad bought me a lawnmower from the tip shop. Believe it or not, yeah, I started full driving on a lawnmower. The first ever trip I got called up for, I flooded my car over the bonnet, over the seats, and they had to tow me out and my car stopped. Full driving, that's what I live for. Forward driving and camping is sort of something that's always been in my family, so I grew up around it. My old man, the first car I remember him having was a short wheelbase 40 series Toyota, and we used to do lots of high country adventures in Victoria, muddy wheeling and that. We then moved to Queensland, and Dad came to his senses and he bought a Maverick, which is basically a GQ, and ever since then, it's been patrols, GQs, so I've just Growing up around it, tinkering on the shed with him, working on things, learning things. All I wanted to do was go full driving. Obviously, I was a bit too young and I couldn't. I was lucky we lived on acreage, and uh, Dad bought me a lawnmower from the tip shop. We took the cutting deck off it. It's me lawnmower. This is my first full drive I was telling you about. Still got it. Still got my personalised plate on the front. Believe it or not, it's got a mid mount winch. That's where the inspiration come for the for the winch truck. Bit of a roll bar. This is how little I was when I first started driving and Dad had to extend the pedal. So, uh, yeah, might rest out one day. I just um, pulled the motor out for a motor swap and I haven't decided what I'm gonna put in there yet. Tell me what you reckon. This right here shows you how much I loved winch and winch challenge. Um, Dad's actually made me up my own little tree trunk protector on his industrial sewing machine because I was that mad about winching them, I wasn't enough. That's where I cut my teeth out in the backyard, driving over logs, digging holes, driving through a bit of mud. Believe it or not, yeah, I started four-wheel driving on a lawnmower. My old man was always building cars on his own or working on other cars. He built a lot of race cars back in the day, early day winch trucks and sort of challenge cars for tough tracks and everything. So I was always down there helping him out and just trying to learn as much as I could. He's sort of my biggest inspiration when it comes to cars. Sometimes I probably wasn't helping as much as I could have been. I remember the first time I ever helped Dad with the oil change. Dropped the oil, put the oil bung in, I thought it was being real helpful. I was poured the two whole bottles of oil in because they were beside the car and Dad comes down and checks the dipstick and says, what have you done? So then I had the lovely job of pulling the sump plug and draining it back out and putting it back into the right level. So between me old man teaching me and a bit of trial and error on my own cars, that's how I know what I know today about building cars and driving them. Jesus. I guess you could say my old man's a little bit like me. He loves to, loves to be driving, never wants to be in the passenger seat. So it was always hard for me to get a drive. Whereas um, one of dad's mates in the four wheel drive club, Jeff, I used to call him Uncle Jeff, he had an 80 series, and don't tell Sean this, but I actually learned to four wheel drive in a grey 80 series. And some of you might know 80 series are a bit lower geared than patrols. So there was actually a couple of times when I outwheeled dad, dad would sort of be stalling it, driving over rocks or hills. And I'd just pad along through in the 80 series, which is pretty cool. So for my first car, obviously all I wanted was a GQ Patrol, but my old man insisted I get something a little bit smaller and not as capable to teach me how to drive a bit better. So we got a Suzuki Vitar for $300. Now, it wasn't a GQ Patrol, but it was definitely an upgrade for my lawnmower. We did a full chassis up rebuild on it. So new chassis, the old one was fully rusted out. Full new paint job on it. Pretty funny story about that, actually. I wanted the car to be red, um, and I come home from school one day after helping Dad do all the prep work, and he'd painted it yellow. But the yellow stuck and it was the same colour as my lawnmower, so it was kind of cool, it was a bit of the progression. We then built some custom bar work for it, which Dad sort of taught me a bit of fab work on it and had a little bit of a lift and some bigger tyres when we first got it on the road. Obviously when you first got your peas, all you do is go forward driving and we actually worked out a route from home to school through the bush and we used to do the same on the way home. There was probably a time there for about six months or so where I didn't even pump the tyres up because there was not much bitumen. We could do more dirt on the way to school and the way home than bitumen. So that was pretty cool. Probably one of the first big mods I did was reduction gears because I'd gone bigger tyres. That made, made an awesome difference and actually made the car more capable. You could drive stuff more controlled. And then I went a rear locker, and then I went a front locker, then I went a body lift, bigger tyres. Obviously the car was getting a lot more capable, but we're finding the braking points in it. The car never had a winch, but one of our mates had a hand winch, and we used that thing a hell of a lot. It might have been the fastest thing, but it always got us out of trouble. With the four or five of us always having the same car, similar mods, um, it actually taught us to drive really well, so cheers dad for making me do that. I wasn't really happy about it at the time, but I'm actually pretty appreciative of it now, because I think it definitely helped me with the way I look at tracks now. I don't just drive the same line, I sort of look, how do I keep the car flat, how do I keep the car away from that bank, and um, yeah, that car actually taught me a hell of a lot. Another thing my dad used to do, not only build race cars, but he used to do a bit of navigating. So 
I was always tonguing to get out there and watch watch all the racing. And I think that's where my love for Winch Challenge come and GQs. Like pretty much all the cars there were GQs. And that's sort of where I decided that that's, that's the type of sport I wanted to get into and that's the type of car I wanted to build. So I thought it was time to uh, buy another car so I could sort of take my wheeling to the next step. And you guessed it, I bought a GQ Patrol. Obviously being on an apprentice wage, my budget wasn't the biggest. So it wasn't the nicest thing we bought it. It had rust hanging out of it, multicolored bar work, odd wheels, but me and my old man worked our magic on it. More so my old man, but it was another learning curve. And that car was a pretty, went through a pretty big stage. It started off pretty standard, only had 33s. I put lockers in it, put different bar work on it, changed the turbo on it, snorkel, all that sort of stuff. Buying cheap parts off Marketplace and Gumtree and stuff, building it up. And then time had come, my old man put a roll cage in it so I could go and go and chase my dreams, basically. Something I've always wanted to do, race winch challenge. So we put a cage in it, drove it up to Cruiser Park. Our first winch challenge, we did pretty, we did all right. We broke a lot of stuff, but we learned a lot. I raced that car in winch challenge, driving it there and driving it home for probably three years. I learned a lot of things in that car. That was sort of the progression from dad always helping me to me learning things myself. And a lot of that was through trial and error. And I'm still using a lot of ideas and things I learned from building that car today. In fact, this bull bar here on my junk car is actually the bull bar off my first ever GQ I bought, which is that Ute. And it's been on every GQ I've owned since then, which is pretty cool. When we first Ute got to the same stage the Vitara sort of got to, I'd modified it as much as I could with keeping it as a road car and uh, the sport just kept evolving. And this is sort of where I made the decision, I'm gonna need a race car and a daily. So the new winch truck that I built, I built it over about a year and I'd sort of spent two years looking at all the other cars with ideas and stuff and I threw them all into one car. It was, um, it was quite, the opposite from my other car, it was, it was full race car. We actually moved the cab back, moved the engine back, mounted the winch in behind the cab so to keep the weight nice and low and in the middle. Went from a diesel to a petrol, so it's got a 4.8 litre turbo in it. The first time we went and raced it, we had a few teething issues. The second time we went and raced it, we come first and we won probably three or four after that. So we put so much thought into the car that there wasn't actually much to change. I changed a few little things, played around with the rear suspension a little bit to make it ride a bit nicer and jump a bit nicer, put an auto in it, and I'll probably race that for the next four to five years. It's looking a bit sad these days. Had a bit of an incident with a tree when I was out practicing one day due to mechanical failure. But um, I've been collecting parts slowly and trying to collect a bit of spare time to fix it up and get it back out in the tracks. Sean messaged me about one of the cars I'd been building probably five, six years ago now. I ended up doing a bit of a video on it. That was my winch truck. Some of these guys might have seen that. A couple of times after that, they called me up to lead him around on trips. There's a bit of a funny story about that. The first ever trip I got called up for, Sean called me a week before and my car didn't even have a motor in it. So I uh, was working full time at the time, obviously no time. So I stayed up all night the night before, put a motor in, got the car running. And first time I'd met, I'd met Sean before, none of the other boys, rock up to this trip. And the second river crossing of the trip, I flooded my car over the bonnet, over the seats, fully underwater, and they had to tow me out and my car stopped. So they left me on the side of the track for the day. I had to drain the water out of my fuel tank, get my car running. And here's me thinking, they're probably thinking, why have we got him here? But they obviously got me back. Well, after sinking my car on the first trip I ever went on with the boys, I quickly redeemed myself uh, on another driving trip. I was actually on the camera then in my car and then, um, sort of progressively guided them around tracks. I was on, on camera for some of them, just local trips, Kenilworth, Glasshouse, places like that. I was very lucky to have the call up to go on the Umbagari trip with them last year. That was unreal. Just got back from Cape with them this year. That was pretty cool. And um, it's something we always talked about and I joked about, oh, you boys should put me on, you should put me on. And I actually got the call. They, they gave me a job, which is pretty cool, which means for you guys, it's gonna be some pretty cool projects coming up. Did you say winch? <laughs> <laughs> cool driving for me. I've sort of never known it any different, any better. Um, it's something I've always loved. I, I love the build up. I love having my car in the shed, tinkering on it or changing things, modifying things. I love going new places, driving new tracks. My theory is if you, if you can drive it first go, the track's not hard enough. I sort of really like technical hard wheeling where um, you really got to think about wheel placement or how you're going to drive it, where you're going to bump it. Yeah, I just, I just froth driving hard stuff.
That's it. Ah, oh, so close. Well, I'm in the middle of doing my shed and yard at the moment, so I've got a fair bit of my stuff still stored at Dad's. This is another little project I got on the go. Um, X race car, I'm actually gonna turn this one back into a road car. So I cut a bit of the cage out, put it on a new chassis. Haven't decided what motor yet, but it should be a good little ute when it's done, I reckon. Well, I told you it runs in the family, and this is just uh, shows you that it does. This is my old man Pedro's junker. When we get out and do some bit of, bit of hard track work, Dad takes this out so he doesn't wreck his good car. And it's actually, it's a bit of a weapon, this thing. Well, you guess it, this is another GQ, and yes, it's mine. I actually bought this one the other day, and I've been tracking one down like this for a little while. I needed an early build date, ADR1, so I needed to be 87 to, I think, about 90, and this is an 88 build day, which is perfect for what I need for one of my builds. It's actually gonna play quite a big part in one of my upcoming things, but I don't wanna give too much away, so if you wanna find out what I've got planned for this thing, you better keep watching. Well, we put up on our socials the other day, has anyone got a question for me? And um, Actually, quite a few people did, so let's answer them. This one's from Harrison Gain. How did he learn to be good on the tools? Home, YouTube, or trade? I don't know where he thinks I'm good at, but most of it's self-taught, and my old man taught me a hell of a lot. I'm actually a plumber by trade, so it's got nothing to do with cars. This one's from Dimitri, and he wants to know, what would I recommend as his first full drive to buy? Um, probably a GQ, mate. No, it actually really depends on what you're doing. If you're just gonna do some sort of more cruisy touring, probably a dual cab ute. They're pretty versatile, those things. If you want to get into something tougher, probably something like a GQ, GU, or maybe an 80 series. But yeah, just work out what you want to do and go from there. This question is from Thin by Will. It's actually quite a tough question and I'm not sure how to answer it, but um, he wants to know, if I couldn't have a Nissan, what would I drive instead? If I had to buy a brand new four-wheel drive these days, it'd probably be a Jeep Wrangler or a Suzuki Jimny. They're both solid axle, coils all round, and I think they suit the type of driving that I like to do. This question is from Corey Sutton, and he's a smart boy because he's just bought his first short or base GQ and he wants to know what first mod should be. If you're gonna take it off-road, my first recommendation would be lower control arms, put some aftermarket ones in, or brace your standard ones, rear panard, and that'll probably, that'll get you going for a while. This question is from Adam Page, and he says, am I gonna get some winch challenge on the channel? I would like to, if you would like to, I'm pretty keen to make it happen. This question is from TJ Kelly and he wants to know what my favourite track is. And it's it's actually a really tough one really, I had to really think about it. It's probably the Jeep track down in Coffs um, because it's got a bit of everything in it. You start in a creek at the bottom, it's all wet and muddy and clay. You sort of work your way up to a hill climb, um, ruts, and there's some big rock steps at the top. So it's probably one of my favourites I reckon. This question is from Ranger Expeditions, TB42 or TB45, rate them both. I'm a great believer in Petra four-wheel drives. I've got a TB42 and I've got a TB48 in my ute, so I can't say much about the 45, but I reckon there's nothing wrong with a Petra four-wheel drive. You can buy them a lot cheaper, which means you can spend more money on making them go further up the track. Well, that's enough about me. How about we tell you what's coming up? Everyone knows I love a bargain, so I went and bought the cheaper Series 4 roller there was in Marketplace, and I've got some big plans for it coming up. If you reckon you know what I'm gonna to do to it, how about you chuck a comment below and tell me what you reckon. But this isn't the only thing I've got on the go. I've picked myself up a G60 Ute cab, and um, I've got some plans for it. I'm not gonna give away the game just yet. There's gonna be a lot of cool content coming up. And if you wanna keep up to date, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. This is Jesse signing out from Full Drive 24 seven.